Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you now. We ask you to calm our hearts for just a little while from all those things that have us turned up and twisted all week long. Help us to listen to you. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever dreamed of having superpowers? Maybe back when you were little. Kids tend to talk about this type of stuff, what superpower they would like. So let's do that right now. You've been quiet for a good long time so far this morning. If you could choose one superpower that you could have for the rest of your life, what would you choose? All right, you've been quiet, so now I'm going to give you a chance to talk to your neighbors, your friends, uh, or strangers, and tell them what superpower you would like to have for the rest of your life. Go ahead, take a few moments to do that right now. Tell them what you would like to have. What is your superpower? You guys have a lot to say about this. Wow. All right, let's try to bring it back up here. Let's see what some of you picked. I'm going to bring out a few. Maybe I hit some of the superpowers you guessed. How many of you said you would love for your superpower to be flying? How many? Oh, boy. A lot of you like the flying thing. All right, for those of you who aren't into flying, maybe you thought it would be really cool to have super strength. <laughs> you thought that that, how many wanted super strength? I used to really want that when I was a kid because I didn't have it. And eventually I discovered that super strength is not coming my way. So what could I have? Ah, I want super brains. Has anybody, did anybody ask for that? For super powered brains? Yeah, I got at least one who said that. What other superpowers are cool that are out there? Well, there's teleportation, being able to leave one spot and pop to the next. Or maybe some of you thought it would be cool to have super healing powers. We kind of like those a little older we get, don't we? Be able to heal a little easier. Or maybe some of you thought it would be really cool to have the superpower of being invisible. Well, would that be a neat superpower to have? Or maybe some of you thought it would be awesome to have control over the elements around us. Whether it was water or fire or something like that. Well, there's lots of cool superpowers that people have dreamed up over the years. But did you know that some of these superpowers are found in the Bible? Did you know that? Well, this morning we're going to start a new sermon series. We were talking about discipleship these past few weeks, and now we're going to start a new one. But this morning we're going to look in the Bible for some superpowers, and we will also discover our greatest superpower today. So what superpowers are in the Bible? What happens in the Bible that has superpowers? Well, we mentioned control over the elements. Does that happen in the Bible? You bet. You go to the story of Exodus and you find Moses, and what does he do? God gives him the power to separate the Red Sea. What about super strength? Is that in the Bible? Of course, you know the story of Samson. God gave him the strength and what he did with it. That's easy to remember, but what about super brains? Is there super brains in the Bible? Well, maybe, maybe the story of Joseph. Remember Joseph, when he becomes ruler over Egypt, Pharaoh says, you have got what I want. Your brain is so powerful, I'm taking you from the prison and putting you prime minister. I'd say that's pretty good brain power that God gave him. Now, what about super healing? Well, we find healings everywhere in the Bible, but we have the story in the book of Acts where Paul is bitten by a viper, and he just shakes the thing off into the fire, and he keeps living. Super healing in the Bible. Now, it gets a little tricky. Teleportation? Say, so, Pastor, there is no teleportation in the Bible. Sure there is. Same book, book of Acts. Philip appears down, does a Bible study with the Ethiopian eunuch, baptizes him, and then what happens? Poof! Philip is gone. Teleportation in the Bible. Invisibility. I had to search for this one. 
Is there invisibility in the Bible? Yes, there is. You might say, no way, it's not there. But turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 4, and we're going to look at a story that is just kind of weird and really wild, and I don't know that I completely understand it. But let's see if we can spot some invisibility. Matthew chapter 4, verse 28. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath. Jesus gets done preaching in the synagogue, and nobody's wanting to shake his hand at the door. The Bible says they are filled with wrath. So much so, verse 29, they rose up and thrust Jesus out of the city, and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. This congregation is a rough congregation, and they mean business. And what does Jesus do? In verse 30, then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. I have no idea if they're just restrained from holding him or if they can't see him anymore, but somehow he just walks through an angry mob without being touched. Superpowers happen in the Bible. But friends, there is an even greater superpower than what we have read about this morning and what we've dreamed about this morning. There is a greater superpower than what Stan Lee and the comic books have come up with, and we find it in the Bible. Turn with me, if you'd like, to our Scripture text, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, or it will be on the screen as well. Listen to this. John writes, and he says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him. In who? In Jesus. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Friends, the greatest superpower that's available to human beings on this planet is not gamma radiation, it's not the force, and it's not radioactive spiders. The greatest power that we have in our hands and in our lives is the power of prayer. It's the greatest superpower we have. But you say, really, Pastor, why should... Why should we pray? I mean, what can prayer really do? How can it make a difference in our lives? Well, friends, do you know the amount of money that is spent for a student to go to college? Some of you know that all too well. But I looked at collegedata.com, and they said figuring out tuition and boarding and all the different things that goes into a student going to a university it costs for public schools, they figured, $23,000 a year. For private schools, about $45,000 a year. Now that I have just effectively depressed all parents out there, you can see that from that price tag, we put a huge emphasis and importance on learning. And there's nothing wrong with universities. There's nothing wrong with going there to study and learn. I've attended two universities and one college. They're great places to go. But there's somewhere else, friends, that we can go to help our learning. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3 says, God says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So by praying, by calling to God, He can help us to learn awesome knowledge. Amen? James chapter 1, verse 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him do what? Ask of God. So we can learn wisdom because it's one thing to have knowledge, but it's even better if you have the wisdom to know how to use it. This great superpower of prayer can bring us knowledge and wisdom, but what else can prayer do? Why should we bother with it? Well, James chapter 5, verse 13 says, is anyone among you suffering? Nobody here is suffering, are you? Hmm. If, any among, if anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. The Bible says that we can pray for healing, that we can pray for help. Philippians chapter 4, 
verses 6 and 7. This is one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. I say that all the time, don't I? But I mean it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for the big things in life. Is that what it says? Be anxious for nothing. Maybe that's a good verse for us. That's just not the whole verse, but that phrase. Let's just say it, shall we? Will you say that with me? Be anxious for nothing. Maybe that's what we should say as soon as we wake up in the morning. God says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And what will happen? The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayer can bring us peace. Not the peace of this world, because that will end in a phone call. That can end with one tyrant deciding he wants this land or he wants these people gone. The peace of this world vanishes in a second, but true peace is what God can give us. Praying can help us with our worry. Why pray? Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, Jesus says from the Lord's Prayer that we can pray to be delivered from the evil one. Prayer grants us power to resist evil, amen? I mean, it would be great if this were a movie or a comic book, and Pastor Doug, we could just send over all the superheroes over to Iraq and just take care of all the bad guys. But we can't solve all the issues in this world in a two-hour superhero movie. But God says you have a more powerful superpower than anything any movie director ever dreamed of. It's right in your fingertips. It's right on your lips. It's the power of prayer to deliver us from evil. Who doesn't need help resisting evil? We all need that. What else can prayer do? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why should we pray? Because it leads to a better life, amen? Does anybody out there want a better life today? God says, ask and I will forgive you. Not only that, but I will help you to forgive others who've hurt you. Prayer helps. Friends, listen to just how powerful prayer can be. Let me share with you this quote from the Review and Herald, July 1883. That was a few years ago. Does it still speak today? Angels of God ready to impart grace and power to those who feel their need of divine strength. But these heavenly messengers will not bestow blessings unless solicited unless they're asked. They have waited for the cry from souls hungering and thirsting for the blessing of God. All of heaven is waiting to hear your prayer. That is a superpower, amen? Why should we pray? Well, yes, it is the greatest power that a Christian can have, but the other reason that we should pray is because it reminds us that we are not God, and we're not in control always. Prayer leads us to a closer walk with God and greater trust, but we recognize that there are things that are out of our control. Do you have that in your life? Are there some things in your life that you today just cannot control? Raise your hand if you'd like that. All right, we got a few of us here. Those things may be out of your control, but they are not out of God's control. The things that keep us up at night, tossing and turning. Those things aren't giving God a sleepless night, are they? No. God instructs us to pray to remind us that we are not in control, but God is. But friends, our prayers are powerful. Your prayers are powerful, and our prayers do make a difference in this world. The angels Wait to hear them. It makes a difference. I was driving in the car with Jeanette and Ethan years ago. We were driving 
through Florida. And we had just experienced Johanna being born. And we were there to bring her home. And we were running to Target to buy some, some girl stuff and, and some baby stuff for girls. And we were there to bring her home to a doctor. And as we were driving, I turned to Jeanette and I said, are you nervous about this? See, we had heard of several of our friends who had tried to adopt and who had went there and been there when the baby was born. And then last minute, the birth mom changed her mind after the delivery. So I said, Jeanette, you know, this, this whole thing could come crashing down at any moment. She said, I know, but I'm not nervous. I, I, I can't explain it. I, I should be, but I'm not. Are you? She asked me. And I said, no. I, I feel the same. We should be biting our nails. We're so close, and yet this is not in our hands. We should be scared out of our minds. You see, a lot still hung in the balance with the birth family, with the agents, with the government, with the lawyers. We should have been a complete wreck with anxiety, but somehow we were just calm. In my life as a Christian, I'd always heard of people saying that they could feel when other people were praying for them. And I thought, well, that sounds cool. But I don't understand that. I had never felt prayer before until I was going to bring my daughter home. And there were people praying in Kansas. And there were people praying in Missouri. And there were people praying back home in Iowa. And I know Pastor Myers and Darlene had people praying here in Lincoln, Nebraska, too. Why do we pray? Because prayer makes a difference. We were calm during the whole adoption, and it was one roller coaster twist and turn after another. But we weren't worried. We were trusting. And what does the Bible say? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. So the prayers of others that brought us that peace that doesn't make sense. I can't explain it any other way except that our greatest superpower is prayer. After our adoption was finally official, I learned of one other person in particular who was praying for us while we were in Florida. Uh, at that exact time when we were in Florida, my grandfather was in the hospital in Iowa. And my grandpa is a retired farmer, and he was in the hospital because he was having heart problems. And so he was going through heart procedures right at that time when his grandson was down in Florida trying to adopt. Now, my grandpa, I've told you, was an old World War II vet. It was his job, his unit was to fight behind enemy lines in Burma. And he did that. He contracted malaria, typhus, and nearly died in the campaign. So he's lived through a lot, been through a lot. But here he was. One day after that heart procedure, he told me he was feeling awful. He said that he'd never felt so worse or was so far down before. And he told me that he'd been worrying about me. He was afraid. A lot of our family was afraid that it wouldn't work out. That something would happen and that we would get our hearts broken. So he told me that he sat up on the edge of his bed, his hospital bed, and he said, I felt, Michael, I felt so low. He said, I turned and I looked at the window. I looked at it hard and I wondered if I could get the dumb thing open to try to jump out of it. Then he smiled at me. He said, no, I'd never do that but I sure felt like it. He couldn't stop thinking about me. He couldn't stop worrying about me until he heard a voice. And the voice said, stop worrying about Michael. 
I've got him. He'll be okay. Grandpa looked at me and he said, I didn't worry about you anymore, Michael, after that. I knew that God would take care of you. So there was no reason to worry anymore. There is power in prayer. My grandpa was worrying about his grandson. He was stuck in Iowa. He was stuck in the hospital, and there was nothing he could do. But our Savior heard his prayer. Jesus heard my grandfather's heart aching for his grandson, and Jesus answered that prayer. God answered that heart cry. My friend, if you've never tried prayer before, there's no better time than right now. It is the greatest power this world has ever seen, and I think even greater things are ahead of us to those who will pray. And friends, if there was ever a time for us to utilize prayer for God's glory, it's now. In the coming weeks, we're going to talk about how we can pray, and we're going to talk about what we do when we don't seem to get the answer we want. But for now, for now, I just invite you to open your hearts up to God. I want to invite you to let Jesus listen to your heart's cry. As we have this song that will be performed for us by Ryan and Emily, I want you to listen to the words, and I want you to allow God to hear what's in your heart this morning. Because he's just waiting, and the angels are waiting to hear what you have to say. So as we listen, let us let Jesus listen to our hearts. from east to west and runs deep as it is wide you know all our hopes you know all our fears and words cannot express the love we feel but we long for you to hear so listen to our hearts and hear our spirit sing. Hear us sing a song of praise that flows. A song of praise from those you have redeemed. From those you have redeemed. We will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are. The words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to us. If words could fall like rain From these lips of mine And if I had a thousand years I would still run out of time So if you listen to our hearts Lord, every beat would say Thank you for the life Thank you for the truth Thank you for the way So listen to our hearts And hear our spirit sing A song of praise that flows From those you have redeemed We will use the words we know To tell you what an awesome God you are Words are not enough to tell you of our love, so listen to our hearts. You know all our hopes, Lord, you know all our fears, but words and only.
But words alone, words cannot express the love we feel. But we long for you to hear. So listen to our hearts. Hear our spirits sing. Hear us sing a song of praise that flows from those you have redeemed. We will use the words we know. Tell you what an awesome God you are. The words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to our hearts. Words are not enough to tell you of our love. Listen to our hearts. Join us as we sing. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, each of us probably at one point in our life has wished we had the power to change the world, to be a superhero. Lord, in your word, you tell us that that power is right at our fingertips if we will just utilize it. So help us to pray, Lord. Help us to take every concern and every worry and lay it at your feet. And Lord, when we can't find the words to say, just listen to our hearts as we cry out to you. This world needs heroes, and they're all around us. Each of us, Lord, you're waiting for us to pray, to send forth your angels, to send forth your power, to finish this work, and to fix this world and take us home. So, Lord, bless each and every one of us this day, and help us. Help us, Jesus to pray. In your precious name we pray at this time and all those willing to pray to their Lord and to use this superpower said, Amen. Amen.